This is Griselda Blanco Restrepo. During the 1970s through the early 2000s, she was known as the Black Widow, a Colombian drug lord of the Medellin Cartel in the Miami-based cocaine drug trade and underworld. Blanco was a figure in the drug trade from Colombia to Miami, New York, and California. Griselda Blanco Restrepo was born in Cartagena, Colombia. When she was three years old, she and her mother, Ana Blanco, moved to Medellin. Upon her arrival there, she adopted a criminal lifestyle. Charles Cosby, Blanco's former lover, said that she kidnapped, tried to hold a child hostage, and eventually shot a child from a nice flatland neighborhood near her own neighborhood when she was 11. Blanco was a pickpocket by the time she was 13 years old. To avoid the sexual assaults of her mother's boyfriend, she fled home at the age of 19 and resorted to looting in Medellin until the age of 20. She illegally immigrated to the United States in the mid-1970s with false passports and settled in Queens, New York. She started a big cocaine business and in April 1975, she was indicted on several federal drug conspiracy charges along with 30 of her underlings. Before she could be arrested, she fled to Colombia, but then she returned to the United States and settled in Miami in the late 1980s. Her return came at the beginning of very public, violent conflicts that involved hundreds of murders and killings a year. These conflicts were connected to the high crime epidemic that swept the city of Miami in the 1980s. To put an end to the influx of cocaine into Miami, law enforcement created CENTAC-26, or Central Tactical Unit, a joint operation between the Miami-Dade Police Department and the Drug Enforcement Administration, or DEA. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, Blanco was involved in drug-related violence known as the Miami Drug War, or the Cocaine Cowboy Wars. During this period, cocaine was more commonly traded than cannabis. Its distribution network, which spanned the United States, generated $80 million per month. On February 17, 1985, Blanco was arrested by the Drug Enforcement Administration in her home and charged with conspiring to manufacture, import, and distribute cocaine. The case went to trial in federal court in New York City, where she was found guilty and given a 15-year sentence. She was charged with three counts of first-degree murder while serving her sentence by the state of Florida, Ayala. One of Blanco's most trusted hitmen agreed to testify against her, according to the prosecution. However, the case collapsed due to technicality relating to a phone sex scandal between Ayala and two female secretaries who worked in the state attorney's office. Blanco was convicted of three counts of second-degree murder in 1998 and sentenced to 20 years in prison, which was to run concurrently. In 2002, Blanco had a heart attack while she was in prison. She was deported to Medellin in 2004. After being released, she was last seen in May 2007 at Bogota Airport before her murder in 2012. She had reportedly retired from the trade. She was shot twice in a motorbike drive-by shooting in Medellin, Colombia. She was responsible for the deaths of more than 200 people while she was running her drug business. This is Maria Licciardi. The Italian criminal was affiliated with the Camorra, head of the Licciardi clan, and was one of the leaders of the Secondigliano Alliance. From 1993 until her arrest in 2001, she was one of the most powerful bosses of the Camorra in the city of Naples. Licciardi was referred to as La Madrina, or the Godmother, by fellow Camorristi and earned the nickname La Picolina early on in her criminal career due to her diminutive height. Among Camorra women, she is respectfully known as La Principessa, or the Princess, due to her good standing. Licciardi was born and raised in Secondigliano, a Neapolitan suburb where the Licciardi clan is a stronghold. Her entire family belonged to the Camorra. Her father is a well-known local boss, or Guapo. One of her brothers, Genaro Licciardi, also known as Asquina, or the Monkey, was a powerful Guapo who later became the head of the clan and founding member of the Secondaliano Alliance, a coalition of powerful Camorra clans which controlled drug trafficking and extortion rackets in many suburbs of Naples. On August 3, 1994, Genaro died of blood poisoning while he was in the Voguera prison. Antonio Tejemie, Maria's husband, was also in Camorra. Following the arrests of her two brothers, Pietro and Vicenzo, and her husband, Licciardi rose to power and assumed the leadership of the clan. She was the first female Camorista to take over as the head of the Secondigliano Alliance and became the boss of the Licciardi clan. 
Several bloody attempts to seize control were made after the death of Hennaro Licciardi, but the clan was kept in stable condition by Maria. Her coalition of 20 Camorra clans was fragile, but she was able to expand control of the city's most lucrative rackets, from drugs and cigarettes to protection and prostitution. Additionally, she played a key role in expanding the city's drug trade market. She led the Secondigliano alliance to become more organized, secretive, sophisticated, and consequently more powerful. Many revolutionary changes were introduced to the clan by Licciardi. The most important one was getting involved in the prostitution trade. There was a code of conduct in place that prohibited the Camores from making money through prostitution. Nevertheless, this code was broken under Licciardi. The girls would be bought from the Albanian mafia by the Camorra. The Camorra practically enslaved and forced them into prostitution after they arrived, even though many of them came on the promise of legitimate work to escape the crushing poverty of their homeland. Numerous of these girls were underage, and they were often under the influence of drugs. Criminal activity increased because they usually spent a large part of their income purchasing narcotics for consumption. Maria Licciardi's reign was smooth for many years until a disagreement arose over a consignment of pure, unrefined heroin. An extensive consignment of heroin arrived from Istanbul, Turkey. In the spring of 1999, Licciardi said that it should not be sold because it was too strong for the average user and would kill those who bought it. This would hurt the alliance's large customer base of drug users. The Lorusso clan, which had always been unhappy under her leadership, disagreed and packaged a shipment for sale on the street. In April 1999 alone, 11 drug addicts died after the sale of the packets of unrefined heroin. There were massive police crackdowns on the Camorra clans after this caused great public outrage. Numerous Camoristi were arrested and subsequently imprisoned. A bloody gang war was fought after the Lorusso clan split from the alliance, including the use of car bombs and bazooka attacks. Clans began to fight over territory and attempted to destroy or take other clans' businesses. Licciardi was forced to retaliate when four clan members were murdered in her stronghold of Secondigliano. Her foot soldiers were mobilized for an all-out counterattack. There were nearly 120 deaths in Naples and the surrounding region due to the deadly gang wars. Licciardi was discovered by investigators around this time. Licciardi went into hiding after being added to the 30 most wanted Italians list. Licciardi was able to avoid capture for two years because of a network of protection set up by her clan. She changed her refuge several times, but she never left the Maseria Cardone district. In her absence, she continued as the undisputed boss of the Licciardi clan and ordered numerous murders of rival mobsters. After the arrest of her brother, Luigi Giuliano. She went to war with the Giuliano clan of Forcella, which was headed by another female Camorra boss, Erminia Giuliano, who took control. On June 9, 2001, several hundred heavily armed officers launched an intensive search operation in and around Secondigliano, backed by helicopter spotters. Upon receiving a tip-off, they stormed the dilapidated building that she had been known to use as a hideout. However, police discovered that Licciardi had installed marble floors, a grand piano, and an outside jacuzzi inside an attic guarded by surveillance cameras. Her repeated successes in avoiding capture by the police inspired local journalists to dub her the Scarlet Pimpernel of Italy. The Naples police arrested Licciardi on June 14, 2001, while she was traveling with a married couple in a car around Melito, near Maples. She did not resist being arrested, and she was eventually sent to prison. The man who was accused of helping her was also arrested but his wife was released because she was a mother of a child. After she was released, police saw that she looked just like the popular mugshot of her that had been released years earlier. After her arrest, her brother, Vicenzo Licciardi, assumed leadership of the clan. Vicenzo was eventually arrested on the 7th of February 2008, after being included on the list of most wanted fugitives in Italy since 2004. He was eventually released. Despite her imprisonment, she still commanded the clan. In 2009, Licciardi was released from prison after almost eight years. This is Samantha Louis Luthwaite, also called Sherafia Luthwaite or the White Widow. This British terrorist is one of the most wanted terrorists in the Western world. Luthwaite, the widow of 7-7 London terrorist bomber Germaine Lindsay, is accused of causing more than 400 deaths. She is wanted on charges of possession of explosives and conspiracy to commit a felony in Kenya. An Interpol red notice has been issued requesting her arrest with a view to extradition. The alleged member of the Somalia-based radical Islamic militant group Al-Shabaab was Luthwaite. She was accused of planning grenade attacks at non-Muslim places of worship and is thought to have been behind an attack on people who were watching football in a bar in Mombasa during Euro 2012. In September 2013, there was talk that she might have been involved in an attack at the Nairobi Westgate shopping mall. 
but other reports said that this was not true or that her role had been overstated. The news media referred to her as the White Widow, a play on words referencing her race and the death of her first husband, as well as the practice of referring to Chechen female suicide bombers as Black Widows. When her parents divorced in 1994, Luthwaite was introduced to Islam as she sought comfort from Muslim neighbors who she believed to have a stronger family network. When Luthwaite was 17, she converted to Islam and took the name Sharafia. In 2002, she met Jermaine Lindsay at a Stop the War march in London and eventually got married. In September 2004, Lindsay and Luthwaite became close to Muhammad Siddiq Khan, the ringleader of the deadly 7-7 bombings at a mosque in London. During the summer of 2005, Lindsay and three other British men detonated homemade bombs on a London underground train, killing themselves as well as 26 others. Although denying involvement in the 7-7 bombings, she fled town with her children after her husband's mind was poisoned after attending radical mosques. According to the reports, Luthwaite moved to Kenya in 2007 or 2011 under a fraudulent passport by the name of Natalie Fay Webb, and shortly after, began to work closely with extremist groups in Eastern Africa. Experts say that Luthwaite was initially protected by an Al-Qaeda unit called the Suicide Squad, but later became a key part of Al-Shabaab and planned and carried out the attacks. In December 2011, Kenyan police raided Luthwaite's apartment in Mombasa, Kenya and found chemicals similar to those used in the 7-7 bombings. Kenyan police arrested British citizen Jermaine Grant who claimed to be working for Luthwaite, even though he was not in the apartment during the raid. Kenyan authorities claimed that the two were planning a bomb attack in Mombasa. Kenyan authorities issued an arrest warrant for Luthwaite on January 4, 2012, but they were unable to locate her. Luthwaite was reported to have fled over the border from Kenya to Somalia in March 2012. Luthwaite is accused of involvement in a grenade attack at the Jericho Bar in Mombasa on June 24, 2012. Al-Shabaab's militants attacked a bar filled with tourists watching the Euro 2012 football match between England and Italy. There were three people killed in the attack. On September 21, 2013, Al-Shabaab militants stormed the center with grenades and indiscriminately fired, and Luthwaite was implicated in the attack on the Westgate Shopping Center. 71 people were killed and over 200 others were injured during the attack. Interpol issued a red notice for Luthwaite on September 26, 2013, for possession of explosives and conspiracy to commit a felony, dating back to December 2011. In May 2014, British intelligence sources said that Luthwaite had married Hassan Maalim Ibrahim, aka Sheikh Hassan, a senior leader of Al-Shabaab in Somalia. It's still unknown where Luthwaite is, although it's believed that she is being protected by Al-Shabaab operatives on the Somalia-Kenya border.